In this video, I want to demonstrate how to finish this pocket. So the first thing I want to do is for this finish pocket toolpath, let's just turn on its cut lines. So I want to change the tool. So I'm going to expand the parameters. I'm going to go here into tool and I'm going to select a new tool. Go filter. And this time I want a quarter inch flat bottom end mill. I'll say OK. I'll select the quarter inch end mill and say OK. And then I'll re-enter the cutting speed. It's over my max spindle speed, so I'm going to change it to 7,000. If you don't, that's fine. I'll change the feed per tooth to 5,000. And I'm going to change the comment to finish the pocket. And I'll come to my cut parameters. I don't want to leave anything here for a finishing operation because this is the finishing. And then I just want to step through these, make sure there's no problems. Check the linking parameters, it's all good. I'll say OK. And I'll regenerate that tool path and my cut lines look good. So I'm going to shut those off. I want to create one more tool path to clean up in the corners where this tool path didn't clean up. So I can copy these or I can go back to pocket and start a new pocket. So I'm going to come back to pocket and I'm going to select some new geometry this time. I want to make sure I get these round holes. So I'm going to select this geometry here, but then the problem is I don't want it to get into here. But let's see how it works. I'm going to say OK. I'm going to go to Tool, into the library, into the filter. This time we're told we want a 532 end mill, so I'll enter 532. I'll say OK. I'll select the 532 end mill and say OK. I know it's going to cap out, so I'm just going to put in my 7000 RPM. If you put 500 in here, that's fine. I'll change the feed per tooth again to 5,000. The plunge rate to 25. And I'll add a comment to remachine the pocket. Oops, and I want this in all capitals. So next I'll go to the cut parameters and I want to tell it this pocket is a remachining pocket. And I could say all the previous operations, it'll just take it longer to figure that out. Or I could say just the previous operation. And that's really all I want to say. What did the previous operation not clean up here? I don't want to leave any material on the walls or the floor. I'm going to uncheck display stock. Unless there's an issue, I won't bother turning that on. And then I'll look at my roughing. It should be fine. The finishing should be fine. But in this case, I was told I want death cuts of 50 thou max. I'm going to add the depth cut of 50 thou. I'm going to tell it to take all cuts by depth. There is only one pocket, so it doesn't matter. I'm going to go to linking parameters, double check those. I should have, for the other ones, also changed the top of the stock to zero, but that's okay. Because I changed the top of the part, here I want to choose the depth. I'm going to choose the bottom. So the last thing I want to do is check that the coolant's on, and it is, and I'll say OK. And it's recalculating those operations, and it's machining everything. And I accidentally left, let's, we'll go back here, the checkbox on to create the additional finish pass. So I'm going to close this, and I'm going to select this tool path. I'll just right click on it and delete it and say yes. So here I have my remachining toolpath and let's take a look at it. So it looks like it's working well. Zoom in on these corners. Yeah, it feeds down, does that. It does the remachining here. However, I didn't want it to do this part of the pocket. So let's just right click and go back to the isometric view. How do I stop it from going into here? It's fine if you let it cut that. Matter of fact, let's just select these pocketing tool paths and simulate it and have a look at that. So if I simulate those, I want to spin around and this pocket's not as it should be. That's why I don't want that done. It's not rounded like it should be. So let's close that. I'll right click and go back to the isometric view here. And how do I prevent that? To avoid cutting this part of the pocket, I'm just going to shut the cut lines off. I'm going to have to create some new geometry. So I'm going to go to a new level. Call it 102. I'll just call this pocket. 
And then I'm going to right click. I've got a color and line thickness. That's good. I'm going to go to the wireframe and tell it create a curve on the edge. And I'm going to choose this geometry. I do want, I'm not going to worry about the Z level. And then I'm going to say OK. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say create a line endpoints. And I'm just going to go from zoom in a bit from this endpoint to this endpoint. I missed it. That's OK. I can trim it. So I'll say trim one entity. I want to trim this where it meets this. And it's good. So now I've created some new geometry. I'm going to come back here to my tool paths. And I'm going to click on the geometry for the remachining toolpath. I'm going to right click and I'm going to tell it to rechain all. When the chaining manager opens, I'm going to switch to this, to just the wireframe chaining for construction plane. I'm going to tell it to select a closed chain. And I'll come out here and I'll select this geometry. And that's OK. I'll say OK. And I'll regenerate the toolpath. I'll show the cut lines. And now I don't go into this area, which is what I wanted. So I'll continue from there in the next video.